Okay, what I'm here to teach you about today is the scientific nature of good and evil. Most people have no understanding of evil at all. I do have an understanding of evil. I was attacked by demons many times as a child. My mother was attacked for 10 years by demons for getting into witchcraft. So I have a good insight into evil and plus I can explain it scientifically to you. So the following is going to be the scientific definition of good and evil. It's very important to understand this because you need to understand who your enemy is and how they think. Then you will understand them much better. If you want to understand what's going on in the world, why the world has turned upside down, it's because of a battle between good and evil. And I'm going to show you right now what good and evil actually is. Okay, for in order for you to understand good and evil, I need to teach you a little something about neuroscience first. What I'm going to teach you is what I call your emotional biological program. And this is how you've been programmed. God programmed you like this. Programmed all people like this. And your program is very simple. Number one rule for your program is the need to avoid pain. You have a need to avoid pain. And this is the most important one of your programs. The need to avoid pain overrides the other program. And the other program, the second one, is the desire to gain pleasure. You can see that up on the screen under pain and pleasure there. So this is your biological emotional program. And what that means is, is that everything that you do and everything that you do not do on a conscious level is controlled by the two controlling forces of the need to avoid pain and the desire to gain pleasure. And no matter what you do or you decide not to do, it's all based upon what you are associating pain and pleasure to. So to give you an, ex an example, let me ask you a question. Want to go skydiving? Yes or no? Your answer will be based upon the two controlling forces of the need to avoid pain, most important, and the desire to gain pleasure. More specifically, the answer will be based upon whether or not you associate pain to going skydiving or pleasure. For instance, if you go skydiving, you might associate the following. Pleasure. Skydiving would be thrilling, exciting, fun, or pain. Skydiving might break my leg, or back, or neck. Will be out of work, lose job, could ruin my whole life for no reason. So you see, you might associate pleasure to skydiving, and if you do, you're going to want to go. If you associate any pain to skydiving, though, you're probably not going to want to go because the pain will override any pleasure. How about another question? Want to read a book? Well, what's the pleasure in reading a book? Well, learn something new. Adventure for the mind. Pleasure in reading and learning and being entertained by the story. Or maybe pain. Boring. No music. No sound. No acting. Takes too long. No fun. Don't like to read. So whether or not your answer would be yes or no to reading a book would all be based upon whether you associate pain or pleasure to reading that book. If you associate pleasure, you're going to want to do it. If you associate any pain, you're not going to want to do it. Unless the pleasure is really super strong and only a little bit of pain, then you'll do it. But if you have a good deal of pain and, and not that much pleasure, you're not going to want to do it. The pain will take over and override, and you're not going to want to do it. This is true for everything. It's true for literally everything. It is your program. The need to avoid pain, the desire to gain pleasure. Now, I know I've only given you two examples. I don't have time to give you more, but I could give you thousands of them. Every single solitary thing that you do or do not do is controlled by these two controlling forces. This is neuroscience. We already have known this for over 100 years. They don't teach it to you in school because they don't want you to know this information. This is information that they use to manipulate everyone with. They're using neuroscience. So now you understand your basic biological emotional program and that everything you do and everything you do not do is controlled by the two controlling forces of the need to avoid pain and the desire to gain pleasure. Now, let's go take a look at good and evil. 
Okay, now you are seeing on the screen good and evil. Good is on the left side, evil is on the right side. Remember, everything you do and everything you don't do is controlled by pain and pleasure. On the left side, up top, we have pain, and down below we have pleasure. Both on the right side as well, pain and pleasure. So we're going to talk about what good associates pain to and what good associates pleasure to. Okay, so left hand side, under pain. Good associates pain to seeing people suffer, to seeing people unhappy, to seeing people miserable, seeing people in fear, seeing people go hungry, seeing people die, seeing people believing in lies. This is painful to good. It doesn't like it. It hurts. What is pleasurable to good? Well, pleasurable to good is seeing people do well, seeing people happy, seeing people enjoying themselves, seeing people with courage, seeing people well-fed and healthy, seeing people live full, healthy lives, seeing people knowing the truth. Good likes these things because this is good. Now let's take a look at the right side. So you keep in mind on the left-hand side now, everything that you do and everything that you do not do is controlled by pain and pleasure. So good associates pain to those things and pleasure to those things. Now let's take a look at evil. Evil is the exact opposite. It associates pain to seeing people doing well, seeing people happy, seeing people enjoying themselves, seeing people with courage, seeing people well fed and healthy, seeing people live full healthy lives, seeing people knowing the truth. This is why evil censors everything. It wants, doesn't want people to know the truth. They don't want people to live full healthy lives. That's why they poison them and teach them to eat their food that they make through their corporation and not food that is grown on a farm. They're poisoning people on purpose. Seeing people well fed and healthy, seeing people with courage. That's why the TV, the news, is filled with nothing but fear because they don't want people to have courage. They want people to be fearful. That is pleasurable to evil. They enjoy when people are afraid. Seeing people happy. That's why everything's being taken away. No dancing, no liquor, no alcohol, no concerts, no get-togethers, no parties, no families getting together for Thanksgiving or anything else. No get-together. Worldwide. Why? Because it's trying to stop a pandemic? No. Because they don't like it when you have fun. It's painful to them. They don't like to see it. Seeing people do well. That's why they do everything they can to make everyone poor. And this is what they are currently doing and will continue to do until everyone has nothing. When they are serfs. Because they don't want people to do well financially. That's why they trick them at every angle, every turn. And trick them into doing the wrong thing. Now, what's pleasurable to evil? Well, pleasurable to evil is seeing people suffer seeing people unhappy, seeing people miserable, seeing people in fear, seeing people go hungry, seeing people die, seeing people believing in lies. This is why you see people suffering now, because evil is in control and they enjoy when people suffer. It's pleasurable to them. It's, you wonder, well, why don't they just change it? I mean, they see that everybody's suffering. Why don't they just stop it and do something different? You know, try something else. They don't want to try something else. They don't want to make things better. That's what you need to realize. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. That's what everybody makes the mistake. Oh, these people are just stupid. They don't know what they're doing. No, it's you who doesn't understand. You do not understand evil. I have been attacked since I was a very young kid. So not only do I understand that evil is a fact that it exists, but I also have insight into it as well. Given to me by God. Seeing people unhappy. That's so why they take everything away. Everything that you enjoyed before, they want to take it away from you. Using the excuse that it will spread a pandemic more. Seeing people miserable. Look at people, they're miserable all over the world. Losing everything. They enjoy this and are doing it on purpose. Know your enemy. Seeing people in fear. Constant, non-stop, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Fear, 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 fear. That's what they are, a message of fear, a religion of fear, 
because they feed off of your fear. They enjoy your fear. When they see you afraid, wearing a mask, getting a vaccine, they enjoy seeing that. It's very pleasurable to them. Seeing people die, all kinds of people are going to die. They are definitely going to enjoy it. They worship it even. They enjoy seeing people being beheaded and the blood spilling all over the ground. They did it in China. And when the Chinese finally were so sick of seeing all the blood spilled all over the ground, the women, the chosen women, took over and enjoyed spilling more Chinese blood. Yeah, you never heard about that, huh? Yeah, there's a lot of things that you haven't heard about because they do not want you to know. Who's they? Evil. People who are running the world. Lucifer down. Rockefeller. Rockefeller says that he sits right under Lucifer. Lu Lucifer sits at the top of the pyramid. Rockefeller says he's right beneath Lucifer. Right beneath him. He's the second in power. And he says that he speaks directly to Lucifer. I absolutely 100% believe him. 100%. I have absolutely no doubt that he talks to Lucifer. So Rockefeller would be the number one evil guy. The richest man in the world and the most evil in the world under Lucifer. Who would be the most evil of them all. So this is why they are bringing the world into this situation. Because they enjoy, they get pleasure seeing people suffer, seeing people unhappy, seeing people miserable, seeing people in fear, seeing people hungry, seeing people die, seeing people believing in lies. Look at everyone believing in the lie. They enjoy that and go through a great deal of effort to make that happen, to make it a reality, to put on the illusion for everyone. And they put on one heck of an illusion, don't they? The Bible says the deception will be so powerful that if it were possible, even God's very elect would be deceived. I'm one of God's elect. I am not deceived. So there you have it. Good and evil. They are opposites of each other. Good does not understand evil because it doesn't make any sense to good. Because they cannot relate to evil. They don't understand it. But evil understands both itself and can see itself and recognize itself and see that it's different from good. And it also sees good. It sees that good takes pleasure in these things that it hates. It learns to hide itself. It learns to lie. It learns to infiltrate and to blend in. And then they use subtlety to manipulate people. And they are experts at it. Evil is an expert at it because they know exactly how you think. They know what you want to hear. They have studied you, analyzed you. Why? Because they have seen all their lives how different they are than you. You associate pleasure to playing with your dog. They think about killing their dog and seeing it suffer. That would be pleasurable. You like to pet a cat. They want to stomp on the cat and hurt it and watch it suffer and try to crawl away. There's all kinds of videos all over YouTube about that, all over the internet about that. These people that enjoy suffering, this is evil. There's more evil out there than you would believe, and it is everywhere. But know that the evil is concentrated in all forms of government and leadership. That is where the evil is. These places look like they're good, but they are not. They're pure evil. This is why you see all of this suffering happening, and they don't do anything to change the course. Because they want to keep the course. They are enjoying the course. It's all done on purpose. Now you understand the difference between good and evil. Now you know your enemy better. They are the opposite of you, and they think the opposite the way you think. Keep this in mind when you look at the world now and see the evil for what it is. They are liars, and they are destroyers. That's what they do. Lie and destroy. Lie and destroy. They do not build. They do not make better. 
They only lie and destroy. This is who they are. They are liars, murderers, and thieves. Let me say that again. They are liars, murderers, and thieves. That's what evil is. Okay, so that was the scientific definition of good versus evil using neuroscience.